Hey everybody, John Wilker here, owner of The Simplest Biz, about the pallet recycling business. We got a great guest today, Chris Hoffman. He is a quadfecta, not a trifecta, a quadfecta, in my opinion, because one, he's a man of faith. We've gathered that as much through, uh, I see him all the time in our Facebook group and, and even on his page. So we see that. He's a musician. I'm a musician. He's a musician. Uh, I love that. He's a dad. And then also he's a pallet man. He's got his own pallet business. He's been through the training. He's a pallet student. He's got his own business and he's grown it very successfully from what I've seen. He needs a great participant in the group. And I want to welcome him to this interview. Thanks for joining me, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking me to hang out with you for a few minutes. What I wanted to first ask you, Chris, what did you do today? Just kind of kind of describe what your day was just to start out with. And then I want to get a little history of what, what you were doing before this and all that. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, so today, is I, I tend to get up early because you can get a lot more done early in the day, compress some time. So I picked up <clears throat> a truckload of lumber today to build some custom pallets. Oh, okay. gotten into some custom stuff. <clears throat> so I had that back to our, our shop uh, by the time the team was getting up and going. And then I spent most of the day just working the business, picking up pallets and delivering pallets. That's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. Once you have it set up, I think people don't realize we are really a transporter mechanism between point A and point B. That's right. Chris, yeah. And Chris has expanded the game. A little bit, and he's got into the building aspect of it as well, which there's a lot of money in that. And I'm sure you didn't start out that way, but you progressed into that because things present themselves to you, and there's money to be made in that aspect. So why the heck not? So what were you doing before the pallet bulls? Yeah, so I've, I've done two things, John, in my in my career. So I'm I just turned 49. So in the first 17 years of my adult life, I was a pastor. And a church planter kind of wrapped up that season of life in 2012 when <clears throat> went through a, an unexpected divorce. When I say unexpected, it was going to happen. And so it happened. And that, <clears throat> that sidelined you in ministry. Right. <clears throat> but what I didn't, what I didn't know then uh, is that it doesn't matter how big of a church or nonprofit or organization that you lead, none of that transferred into like, you know, the secular workforce. So I didn't know what I was going to do. And so I ended up partnering with a friend and got all my financial services licenses and really just jumped headlong into that game. Spent 10 years uh, doing, you know, life insurance, annuities, right. mutual fund investing, just everything. I did it all. And, right. uh, I would say it's, it's a lot more sexy of a job but it's a lot more harder than pallets. So I kind of came to the end of a 10 year run at doing that. And I, I was working for a company. It was a great job. I was managing the, the life insurance side of a health and life agency. So I was the life insurance leader and I led agents all over the country. And uh, I never led that many agents that were spread out geographically. Mm -hmm. and what I learned is that uh, managing life insurance agents was like herding cats and uh, it was nearly impossible. Uh, whatever. It was tough. I understand. So in some of my downtime, I, I was, I was looking for a franchise opportunity um, and met with a franchise coach and <clears throat> did that. Nothing really jumped out at me and there were some costs, you know, that I couldn't, couldn't jump into, or I didn't think was wise. Right. It's not a cheap um, endeavor. <clears throat> you know, based on just where we were um, in life, it just wasn't uh, the right timing to jump into something that cost, cost so much money. And I think because of that, and just the fact of what I was searching for online, you popped up mm -hmm. in some of your marketing. And that's really kind of how I even got introduced was, I think I saw a YouTube video of you and I was like, Oh, I think I could do that. Yeah, it's funny as I tell people because I've got friends that still kind of shake their head, uh, you know, because I've got the papers that tell you <clears throat> what the Bible says, uh -huh. take the complexity of the Bible and help people understand it. 
And then I got papers that tell you, you know, how to be insured and how to invest your money. Right. And now I'm just a pallet guy. <laughs> Simplicity. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Simple. That's really cool. I mean, what what a different life it is, and it of course it's not glamorous or anything, and but there's a lot of headaches that come along with the finance. My my dad was a financial planner and was life insurance and investments, and I'm the last of ten children, so he had to be really. I mean, he had to have knowledge in that, and there were so many moving parts and. And then regulations change, and it's just a never-ending cycle of, of having to learn yeah. more and more and cramming your brain full of the new fads that come into play and the new products that come into play. It's, that's tough. That's tough. Continuing education, just it was nonstop. And there's no loyalty anymore um, in the industry. You know, my dad yeah. would you know, stay with his insurance guy. Yeah, technology now. Until... So the guy, you know, quit, retired, you know, nobody stays with anybody anymore because of technology. Right. And it's very tough. You can shop um, anything. Yeah, but what was it about the pallet business itself that when you heard about this, that motivated you to actually take the leap? <clears throat> yeah. So, I mean, my process, and I, I don't know if you even remember this, I talked to you quite at, mm -hmm. at length, and I think I talked to your brother. Mm -hmm. And um, what, what intrigued me, is that of the simplicity of the model, right? Right. It's simple because it's just pallet. You know, there's some variations of grade A, grade B, cause, you know, squares. You know, there's all the different things, but it's still at the end of the day, it's simple. Right. And I like that, you know, when you're, when you're working in financial services and in insurance, you kind of have to kind of present yourself, you know, in a, just a, it's a white collar yes, opportunity, yeah. right? Yeah. And I'm more of a simple, the time. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a everyday middle of America, keep it simple guy. And I was just ready to be with my people. Right. That's cool. And uh, So that's really, really was kind of the, what, what led me to have the conversations with you and to ultimately buy the course and go through the course. Understood. And the fact that you have to, I wouldn't say put a mask on. We try to be ourselves regardless, but finding more comfortability. And we deal with a lot of blue collar folks, salt of the earth, hardworking. Yep. I've always liked that about the pallet game. And I've dealt with white collar before. And you almost have to put an air on, I guess, just to create a little bit of authority or something. It just doesn't feel quite right for me, for myself. And there's people out there that, that do it flawlessly, but I don't want to have, I just want to be me. And it's not like you just wanted to be you, right? Yeah. Question, the next question, how has your business changed since you completed the training? You so well, kind of give me an idea where it started and then what you uh, yeah. moved toward. So, I mean, <clears throat> the, what it broke down for me was you told me to go look for some things before I even bought the course because I was... Mm -hmm. It's an, an upfront investment to get going, to at least get the content to learn the system. And, you know, I'm a married man, and wife uh, was just as skeptical. Yeah, you know, she's turning her head sideways. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you want to be what? So me and my oldest son one day got in the car, and we just went and drove around to the places you said to go look. And sure, mm -hmm. it was exactly what all of your you know, snippets of marketing that you do in the course. So <clears throat> we bought the course and I was fortunate to be in a position to where I had saved some money um, from a tax return. And I mean, we had just been diligently saving some money. Right. So I didn't have to, I could just start the business mm -hmm. and not have to work for 60 days, not have to stress about money, if right. you will. <clears throat> so the first deal I did was just, uh, uh, I had, was doing some prospecting. I don't even know if I had, how far I had gotten into the course mm -hmm. when I was out and I talked to one guy and he said, well, this is the size pallet that we need. And then I rode down the road and, he, and this guy was like, well, this is the size pallet that we have. Okay. And it was a match. And then it wasn't standard pallets. It was an oddball size pallet. Wow. Yeah. And I'm like, well, how, you know, or he goes, well, we need to get like $3. 
you know, per pallet for these. In the Atlanta market, it's a little different as far as, you know, acquiring pallets. Right. And so I talked to the guy who needed that. I said, what have you guys been paying? And he told me, it was like, you know, $17 or something. And, I, and I'm thinking, oh, I, I don't want to be greedy. So I'm going to, I can save you some money. Will that work for you? Well, absolutely. So I bought the pallets for $3, mm. 100 of them. And then I sold them for $13. Perfect. And I, win, win, win. This works. <clears throat> so then I really dug into the course and uh, bought a bought a truck because I for me it, it was gonna be about volume. Yeah. Just because I had an income to replace and I needed it. If I was gonna move pallets, I was gonna move a bunch of them and maximize my time at one, you know, lots of pallets, pick them up and, and deliver them. And, get and you're in Atlanta, around the Atlanta area, there's yeah, there's not a shortage, right? So it's everywhere. And that was coming out of COVID. So that was that was wild all in a, in and of itself. It was. But um, but yes, yeah, so, so the course really, and I'm a I'm a when I say I'm a simple man, I'm a I like to I like to run a play that works. Mm-hmm. And so what I literally did was go through the course and I just tried to do what you said to do. I mm-hmm. used the same words, the same phrases, nice jeans, button up shirt, right, business card. You know, and, and like like what I loved in the beginning where you would say it's like knocking out third graders, right? I mean, it, uh, that was my experience every single time. And you know why? You felt at home. You just said it earlier. Yeah. You know, you felt like you're in your own skin, and it shows. That's right. I felt at home, and I and I and I didn't and I didn't I, and I I wasn't uh, the normal pallet jockey riding around oh. with a beat up truck trailer. Nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> you know, we, they, they are a part of our business now. Um, right. But but it was it was just not it was not difficult. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. that. I love that. And that's just a lesson for everybody listening. Knowing your stuff, been out in, in a blue collar world your whole life, and this is the type of business that kind of matches up with it. But I also have people that have been coming from the white collar because they're burned out in the corporate field, yep. the being in a cubicle, the rat race, the you know, we know all been, you know, a lot of us have been through that. And this is a different world, but it's a lot, I don't know, it's just a lot more comforting to deal with just normal people. It's just a nice thing. What's your typical day now as far as what you operate? You get up at seven, you, are you just doing custom builds? Or are you doing the combination of both right now? Uh, we do mostly 4840s. Yeah. We do some oddball stuff. Um, square some squares and stuff like that mm-hmm. because we have the supply and we have clients that need them. So it's just again, it's just an easy thing. If you find this is what we need, well, I can find them over here. So in the begin in the beginning, in the beginning, just to simplify, because w- what we're doing now is beyond anything I thought this would be like. Just yeah, how did it evolve? I mean, we, what, what, what you were just doing point A to point B, correct? And then you, exactly. ended up, what, at what point did you move into having your own shop? Yeah. And- so, yeah so it was really in three phases. Um, we, I was picking up and dropping off. Um, and then <clears throat> not, not any tension or difficulty because our clients loved our service, our customer service and communication mm-hmm. and pricing. Um, but some of the pallets that we would pick up weren't, you know, whole pallets. There were some brokens. And so we started doing some of that. So so I started doing pallets in, in April of 2022. Mm-hmm. So by the end of May, uh, we were getting feedback that we had some broken pallets in our in our deliveries. My oldest son graduating and already knew that he did not want to go to college. Perfect timing. And I was like, well, and so we started getting pallets, bring them here to the house. He'd repair right. in our, we have a detached garage. So it was perfect. But then all of a sudden the business really started growing with supply mm-hmm. and with clients. And so our little driveway and uh, garage became a little pallet. Right. And, you know, I live in a downtown area. And so the city of Winder, they were like, you got to move on. <laughs> yeah, you can't yeah. do this here. <laughs> so we ended up acquiring a piece of property out in the country that had a shop, 
and set up base of operations there. And then once we had our location, like it was kind of some permanent things really began to cook. Mm -hmm. Did um, you have a website? Did you do a website? I did a, web, I did a website before I ever hit the streets because I wanted See, people. That is so important. Having people chase you instead of you chasing them can make a difference. You can go out there and hit the streets and knock on doors as well and be successful. But smart move, marketing move, to have it even creates a little bit more legitimacy when you have a website. We yeah. do that for students, as you know, with some SEO, search engine optimization uh, that for the folks that want it. But glad you went that route. I, I find that some of the successful students have gone that route for sure. You know, if you really want to blow it yeah. up. Yeah, but, and, I, and I'd, I'd learned a lot of that, you know, in my previous gigs, you know, it's, it's super important when you're planting a church and or launching a financial services a business. So we definitely wanted to, to utilize that. So that was kind of phase two, moving to that location. And honestly, it I tell people all the time is we were kind of in the right place at the right time. And the Lord introduced us to the right people, just almost just right after the other. And I think I don't know, I'm good at building teams uh, and leading people, but I can't really take a ton of credit for what's happening because it's just kind of happened. And I've just kind of moved with it and led through it. Correct. I got you. And so we outgrew that space and then landed at a, a I formed a partnership with another pallet company who had relocated. So their old spot was. Uh, oh, wow. That's really cool. I didn't know that. And they're believers and they're, they're, they kind of run their, their pallet business funds, a lot of ministry. Mm -hmm. we kind of like we were just kindred. Like-minded. Mm -hmm. So he really helped me get situated for really stupid amount of money. It was just not, it was super cheap for me to be there. It was supposed to be kind of temporary, but then it became permanent. And now we're buying the whole thing. And, you know, but, but once we landed there, we didn't know which way was up or down. It just started happening so fast. Um, uh, right. The lay of the land is this niche is really underserviced. Yep. And you start you know, knowing your stuff and, and having the solutions for these businesses. And, and then you combine that with relationships. Yep. And you combine that with customer service. You know, it's a whole new world for those customers. They, they've been having a struggle in this area for so long. So that let that be a lesson for folks out there listening. This particular niche is way underserved. And That's like right. he said earlier, if you treat this right and know your stuff, you can treat it like knocking out third graders. That's right. Yeah. Right? One of our, you know, our tagline in the beginning uh, was changing the local pilot industry one client at a time. Love it. And that was just kind of our phrase. And I think people was refreshing to people because we weren't the gigantic pallet yard right they didn't care you know and and we're even though we're a, a larger company uh, we're a me medium size pallet company we still run like we're a small company I relational uh super intention so how many pallets you move in a week now so we're kind of bumped up to between the four and five thousand pallets a week range and, Which, and what amount of, are they all custom built? Are they, are they most, mostly are, you know, number ones and number two. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. We do customs, probably 20% of what we do is customs. Yeah. Understood. Here's something as well. His business grew. I imagine you got some pretty big clients in Atlanta. You know, everything's a little bigger in Atlanta, correct? And, and yep. just to give a little inside baseball for folks, when the client's bigger, a lot of times they have to have 4840s because they're sending out full loads of trucks. And when you're dealing with larger clients, the 4840 will come into play. But for people either starting out or want to keep it, you know, in a smaller scale, it doesn't have to for the smaller and mid-sized businesses. Just to make that clear. That's right. Because a lot of people don't understand that. They think the whole world's a 4840 standard and, there's different variations of businesses where the model can grow toward 
Uh, and it can go in 16 different directions. I, I think it's cool that you saw where the revenue was coming from in different directions and you gravitated your business. You know, a lot of my students don't do the warehouse. There are some that do, but you saw opportunity to help folks and you had to grow because of what was coming your way. So kudos. I love it. So, you know, we have a Facebook group. A lot of people don't know about our Facebook group. So have you networked a lot with any students or uh, yeah, I'd like to hear a little about what your feelings about the, the group is. And yeah, man, I tell you, sharing. Group, I mean, you know, we all kind of gravitate towards like-minded people and, you know, so I've really built some strong relationships with uh, some folks in the group um, mm -hmm. that are like-minded in their faith. Um, but, but at the same time, obviously want to run the business like you espouse to how you coach it. <clears throat> But that's opened up opportunity for us to all kind of collaborate, whether on the supply side or the I need pallets or sell pallets. And it works both ways. Like right now, we've got I'm working with two guys here locally. They got they they do a lot of brokering, and I've got pallets that need to be sold. Right. And so they're it's like a little triangle network within the bigger network, but but yeah. it's turned into putting pallets where they need them. Then they're they're finding pallets and bringing them to me so that, that we can turn them and send them over here. And <laughs> oh, you've got you got a bunch of boards. Can you bring those when you bring, you know, right? This does it's, it's a really cool synergy, you know, to, to be locked arms with people who get it. I just wanted to do pallets really well. I think yeah. at some point when we get this property purchased and add a second shop, we can expand some things. But I'm sure the financial situation has changed for your life as well as what's your life like as far as comfort level financial changed quite yeah. a bit from what you were doing before yeah so well yeah, I'm, i mean you know when you're <clears throat> you're growing you know, yeah so kind of where we are is it you know having to reinvest cash flow into the business right, the right. Business. but was what i couldn't do at all my, well when i was what I couldn't do at my last couple of jobs is I couldn't just give myself raises. <laughs> that's that's the beauty of being in business. And now I can. And uh, that's pretty. That's pretty. pretty cool. uh, you know, I so, get it. You know, we. You know, I, I set my pay. You know, based on where it kind of needed to be in the beginning, and then I've just kind of slowly bumped it up as uh -huh. appropriate. Our business has grown. We're pretty excited about what the future looks like if things keep trending the way they're trending. And you said you're expanding into two? Well, we're going to, we're going to buy the property that we're on uh -huh. at a second shop. Okay. So yeah, we're buying out the pallet. And we'll, we, so we'll have like a custom specific shop that's smaller. That's all they do for odd size. Where do you see this in five years? Five years. I'll, my, in five years, my participation in the business will be a lot less than what it is now. Okay. I'm actually in the process of, uh, of restructuring, reorganizing so that I'm not working as much. I'm, right. I, I wanted to give it three hard years. Gotcha. Um, but my son, Cooper, now runs our day-to-day -day operations. You know, he's two years into it now, mm -hmm. most with us. And uh, he, he runs the show. And he tells me this and he loads me and I go and I come back. He loads me and I go. Isn't that neat? We have so many father, son, father, daughters, brothers doing this business together. I think that's wonderful. They'll never forget yeah. these days. I'll tell you what's, what, what's really fun for me <clears throat> as a dad, my oldest son, you know, he's, he's the number two guy, but like I've got another middle child that he works. Uh, he's He'll be a senior this year. But he does, uh, you know, work release from high school. So he leaves school and comes and works at the shop. Oh, okay, cool. And my other middle son, when he feels like got some time between sports and athletics, he comes and works. So when I pull in, I, you know, I get to see my kids. It's just, you know, pretty cool. That is, that's a good life. I, I mean, you can't do that selling insurance a lot of times for sure. Being stuck at a corporate office. Time freedom, money freedom. You're in a growth spurt now, so I, I like your plan to be able to get this thing set up over the next few years and enjoy, maybe get back into, 
I don't know if your season's completely over and sharing the good news or or not. No, but. no I'm, I'm I'm pretty involved with a couple of ministries, more involved, super involved <laughs> in our church that we attend. <clears throat> um, but I have the opportunities to preach with a couple of ministries that I partner with. I do a lot of music. You know, I don't know where that. I, I do music with my band. We're a, we we're all believers, but we do secular music mm-hmm. so that we can be in places that the church doesn't go. And so that's kind of our uh, how we get in and, and shine a light in the places that normally you know pastors don't. My example, I, get right? I, I used to be a pastor. I wouldn't hang out at the places that we play music at either. You know, yeah. Um, but but I'm also leading some worship. Uh, we have a recovery ministry at our church, and so I help once or twice a month in that environment. Understood. Good. Right. Very good. And so all of this is about creating space for me to be able to do things that I'm passionate about, which is more time with family, ministry, and music. I didn't tell people this, but that was my motivation. I, you know, I don't know if you know, I have like five CDs, me and a co-writer wrote tons and tons of music and I would literally switch over at 10 a.m. after I got done with palettes and and I, I loved writing and recording and mixing and producing songs our own songs that we were writing and I would literally spend 10 hours of my day doing that after the palettes so the palettes were the right. vehicle then I got into painting you know and got to do that type of thing and had art show hey, you know I could paint it gave me that time, that quality time of life that a lot of folks are missing out on. Well, let's wrap this up. And for folks who are out there that have never seen this before, can you give me like a little piece of advice or wisdom or something about this business model that they could think about, chew on? Sure. I think that, that if you're considering doing pallets, number one, don't try to do it on your own, follow people who have done it and just copy what they do. Mm. And that this thing can be as, as big or as small as you want it to be, whatever income level that you need, you can achieve it through, through pallets quickly. I I I replaced my, I replaced my full-time income and inside of 60 days. Wow. Yeah. That was my goal as well. When I started, how fast can I, get out of that situation. I was so dead set determined to make it happen. And I hustled my butt off, but the dividends that paid yeah, off for yeah. years and years. Yeah. Cause you told me, cause I was one of my questions before I, you know, before I bought the course mm-hmm. and I said, this is how much money I got to make. And you just did some numbers and you goes, well, that's, that's this many pallets per week. <laughs> oh, well, I can <laughs> I can do that. If I can sell life insurance policies to people that might not even really need them, I, I can my, sell some pallets. That's why my wife sees something in the store and, you know, a necklace or something. Or she, I said, well, that's only, you know, 130 pallets. Yeah, I think we can do it. <laughs> it's a funny life to live. That's Man, I, Chris, I appreciate it. I've been meaning to do this forever. Life's been busy on this end, of course. And I know yours is as well. And I'm glad we took some time out to get it done. But thank you much. I, I really appreciate you spending some time with me. Yeah, man, I really appreciate you and, you know, taking the time to create the resource that you've created for people like me who are looking for freedom. Something different. Yeah, out of left field. I, I, I will agree it is out of left field. Yeah, but good. what's that old saying? Sometimes opportunities are ignored because they're dressed in overalls. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>